guys, so today I have swatches of the Zoya Element Collection. There's two hands here for fall 2018. There are 12 polishes here all together. I will link the website down below because these are available right now. And I will get into the swatches. So since a lot of the polishes in this collection are really similar in color, or yeah, I'll just go there. They're similar in color. Um, I'm going to read the description straight from the Zoya website. And I also apologize for my voice. I've been up for like... 13 minutes so far this morning. I just really need to finish this video. So the first polish is Rumor, and this is described as a full coverage mauve taupe with a subtle shimmer. So this one actually covers pretty well on that first coat. It's a little bit sheer. I can still see a bit of my nail line, and I just like mashed the brush into my cuticle. It's like 724. Bear with me. So there are some brush strokes in this when it's wet. They do seem to be going away a bit when it dries, but because this is such a pearl-like finish, I'm not going to count on them being gone completely. I have done the swatch pictures for this collection yet, and it's really bad, but I, I can't always remember what the finishes were like or what the polish was like after it dried because I go through so many swatches like in one sitting that it's hard for each individual polish to stick with me. So these aren't total first impressions, but they're like kind of a little bit. Like, they're reminders, I guess. You can see over here that it is starting to dry dull, and formula is pretty good on this one. So this one does cover completely on that second coat in typical me fashion. My coat on my pointer finger was a bit thinner than the rest of the nails, so it was a little bit lighter and needed more coverage. The rest of them, I mean, they're definitely not one coaters, but they were a lot closer. The brush strokes that are in this polish don't completely go away. I'm really not... I would say the majority of them don't go away, so you do want to be careful to try to make those as straight as possible so they don't, like, ruin the finish, I guess, or distract from the color. That's always been my issue with brush strokes. So if they're there, I can't look at any, like, anything but the brush strokes. So that is two coats of Rumor. So the next polish is called Jenna, and Zoya describes this as a full coverage dusty rose pink cream with blue undertones. So this one is super opaque on that first coat. I'm going to take a good look at it. I think I'll probably end up needing two because as I thin this coat out, i got a lot of polish on the brush. I'm seeing like a few dark spots and streaks. But if you're a bit steadier than I am, you could probably get away with this in one coat if you don't mind just having one coat of polish on. Really good formula on this one. It's weird because it kind of like feels to me like it's a little thin, but it's covering really well and it's not moving once I put it on my nail. So this one does cover completely on two coats. After that first coat dried, I feel like it's definitely one that you would want to do two coats with. I mentioned how the polish, like it doesn't behave like a thin polish, but it feels thin. It kind of dries like that as well. You can see like every little ridge and imperfection in my nail. And um, obviously top coat would help that quite a bit too, but a second coat also just adds enough thickness that it covers that up. So that is two coats of Jenna. The next polish is called Ruthie, and Zoya describes this as a full coverage raspberry rose cream. So this one is very full coverage. I am trying to get a bit of polish off, <laughs> extra polish off of my brush because I did get a ton. It's not completely opaque. I do have a few spots that are just a little bit uneven. They're a little bit lighter than other parts of the nails. Nail but it still covers really well. And a good formula on this one as well. I would say this is probably a little bit on the thicker side, but not so far into the thicker side that it's bad. I prefer thicker formulas. I know I've said that a million times before, so this is like perfect for me. So this one does cover completely in two coats. It doesn't change the color at all, and it doesn't really look like this polish is one of those ones that dries darker than it applies. Everything seems to stay pretty consistent. So that is two coats of Ruthie. The next polish is called Marianne, and this has like a really cool like, glowy shimmer to it. Zoya describes this as a full coverage pink toned rose with, oh, soft glowing shimmer. So I can already see just right off the bat here, and hopefully the camera picks it up as well. This covers pretty well, you know, a little bit uneven, gonna need two coats, blah blah blah, but the shimmer that's in here, I don't know if you can tell, is less pearl-like, 
like it was with the first polish and a little bit more, I don't know, you can kind of see each individual shimmer particle. They're a little bit bigger. And like I said in my um, Essie video, I kind of described this a little bit. I'm not the exact same finishes, but same idea. That you're not going to have as many brush strokes with a polish like this as you would with a more pearlish or uh, metallic polish because this kind of shimmer really breaks those up. And you might start to see uh, a lot of texture on this nail here throughout the polishes. That's my nail. I've been doing a lot of swatches and every once in a while I'll get like little, I don't know, a little phrase that will come up off of my nail and I usually buff those off, but I get to a point where my nails have been buffed to the max for a short period of time and that's kind of where I am now, so I'm not gonna touch that one um, unless it gets really, really bad throughout the course of the video. So you can see that this does dry a bit dull, so you will want top coat to make it shiny. If I look really, really close at that second coat, I can see a few brush strokes in that shimmer, but it's very, very, very minor. It's not something that's like actually going to distract from the polish. And it does get a little bit deeper, well that's a lot of polish, on that second coat as well. So that is two coats of Marianne. The next polish is called Kendra, and this is described as a beautiful full coverage Marsala cream. So this one is very opaque on that first coat. I did get a bit more polish on my nail. I'm going so slow. I'm painting so slow. I got more polish on my nail than I anticipated. A few lighter spots that I do want to cover up. And hopefully I don't get like more and more annoying as this video goes on because I'm slowly working on a cup of coffee. That middle finger might be the most uneven, unskilled coat of nail polish I've put on in a while. Really good formula on this one as well. This feels, which was the one that I said was like thick, but thick in a good way? Um, Ruthie, maybe? This feels just slightly thinner than Ruthie. So this one does cover completely in two coats and these so far have leveled themselves out really well. So this is two coats of Kendra. The next polish is called Donnie and this is described as a full coverage purple toned sangria cream. So this one covers pretty well on that first coat. It's very even. I do think it's one that's going to get a bit darker after a second coat. It does look a little bit light right now. Great formula on this one though. So this should cover completely here on this second coat. You can see, you can see cat hair. See that? Oh, two of them. Awesome. Sorry, I had to pick a cat up a little bit ago and my hands are like a little sweaty. So I can't, can't really shake the cat hair at the moment. So this covers completely in two coats. You can see how uneven my coats are just based on the different shades of the polish across my nails, but everything's evening out here in two. And this one does dry fairly shiny, but obviously I would recommend top coat anyway. Also, if my swatch of Kendra is like totally chopped up and makes no sense, I went off on a tangent about another polish while showing this polish and then decided it was really complicated and like no one was gonna follow me because my brain was going all over the place. Coffee. So if that gets chopped up, it's because I cut that section out. So that is two coats of Donnie. The next polish is called Maeve, and this is described as a full coverage Concord Grape Cream. So this is another one that covers pretty well on that first coat, a little bit sheer. I can see some light spots through there. This one has a really good formula. Now I mentioned before that I prefer thicker formulas. This definitely isn't on the thicker side, but I think for like the average person, if you don't have a preference between thick or thin, this is like a perfect right down the middle formula. And I really like this color as well. I'm usually not a big purple fan, but when they start getting darker like this, I can get on board with that. So this one does cover completely in two coats. It covers up those few light spots. This is another one that dries fairly shiny, but like I said, I recommend top coat anyway. It just makes everything look nicer. And there's, you know, wear time. It'll increase your wear time too, usually, but I only wear polishes for like 24 hours, so I never even think of wear time, which is really bad because it's kind of my job. But let's be real. If I had a boss on YouTube, I probably would have been fired already. Okay, so that is two coats of Maeve. The next polish is called Alyssa, and here's, let me read the Desoya description because I would have just been like, yeah, this is a brick red. 
but Zoya says that it is a full coverage red toned purple cranberry cream. So this one is pretty much like the purple. The formula feels the same as the purple. I would think the coverage is close to the same as the purple, maybe a little bit more sheer, but it should still cover fine in two. It's a little bit uneven, but I don't think it's gonna really make much of a difference after that second coat. And like Maeve, this I think has like the perfect middle of the road formula where everybody, I don't have nearly enough of my brush there, but everybody would be happy, I think, with this one, whether you prefer thicker or thinner coats. This just kind of sits in the middle. What am I even doing with this nail? I might have said thicker or thinner coats. I meant formula. So this one does cover completely in two coats. And this one also dries very shiny. I, this feels like my first video ever. Like I feel so awkward and like I'm making so many dumb little mistakes. Like what is happening here? Is there a hair in there? There it is, a little cotton ball fuzzy. So in case I did, I got, I have no idea what I've already said. This dries fairly shiny. Again, I recommend top coat anyway. So that is two coats of Alyssa. So the next polish is what I believe is Rochelle. I don't know why you would spell it so fancy if it was just Rachel, so I'm going to call it Rochelle. But this is described by Zoya as a full coverage mulberry berry cream. So this is, this is a really dark color. I, I like, this is like the fall color. These really, really dark, reddy purple shades. It's a little bit uneven, but it will cover up fine in two. Okay, so this one does cover completely on that second coat and covers those light spots. Let's see what it can do on this botched coat over here. I swear you guys are going to think I'm like on something. I'm on getting up at 7 in the morning. I know that's probably not even early for a lot of people, but man, that one extra hour really did me in today. So this one also dries pretty shiny, and this is a polish that's really, really dark obviously, but I don't think it's so dark that it would be confused for black. I don't know. I'm looking at the viewfinder. Uh, it might be confused for black. I like polishes like that. This one is just a little bit, just light enough. I think that it shouldn't be a huge issue of people thinking you have black on your nails, but I like polishes like that that are so dark that they're almost black, but you know that they're not. So that is two coats of Rochelle. The next polish is another really, really dark, almost black, but not quite there shade. This one I think is more likely to be confused for black than Rochelle was. This is Leeton, and this is described as a deeply saturated blackened aubergine cream. So this is very opaque on that first coat. You can see through it just a little bit, but not too much. Definitely won't need more than two. This one has that really good right in the middle, everyone's preferences. Uh, will like this. Everyone with different preferences will like this kind of formula. And this is one that I don't think is a one-coater straight out of the bottle, but I think if you use this a couple times and it thickened up just a little bit, probably be a one-coater. That's kind of how my old bottle of Pacific Blue is. My newer bottles are not one-coaters at all, but my bottle that's like halfway gone has thickened to the point where I can get away with one. So this one it does cover completely in two coats and it is very, very dark. I know I said in my Essie video that maybe I'm starting to not like polishes that are almost black or that will be confused for black as much as I used to, but then I put this on and the last one on and I'm like, okay, nope, I still love them. And you know what? That uh, ring fingernail really didn't fray. This is the last cream. It's the last one that you'd really be able to see any texture in. And it really didn't fray as much as I thought it would throughout the video, so we got away with that. So that is two coats of Leeton. So the next polish is called Gardener, and this is described as a deep periwinkle with a vibrant magenta shimmer in a dense foil finish. There are two of these more shimmery style polishes. This is definitely the more opaque of the two. When I did my swatch pictures, I did the other one first, and I thought they would both be the same. It is a bit sheer on that first coat. I believe I only did two for the pictures. We'll see what happens here. Whoops. It is a bit, a little bit streaky as well. Good formula on this one. The other one, I mean, I guess I'll talk about it when I get to it, but the other one I think you could, might be able to get away with as a topper. And obviously you could put this over whatever polish you want because you're free to do so, but I would think that this is probably a little bit too dense on one coat to be a topper for anything. 
So this one actually builds up really well on that second coat. It does cover completely for me, but I am doing a little bit of extra care here on the ends of my nails to make sure that it does. I don't think that you'd have a real hard time getting this opaque in two, but I can see where depending on your application you might need three. This is not a really chunky glitter, so it doesn't dry textured at all. It does dry a bit dull, so you will want top coat, but it shouldn't be too difficult to remove. You might get some of those sparkles kind of sticking to the skin around your nails, but you shouldn't have to scrub anything off of your nail. So that is two coats of Gardener. And the last polish is called Devon, and this is like sparkly denim. This is described as a steel blue with hints of multicolored shimmer and a dense foil finish. So you can see this one is a little bit more sheer than the last one. Not too, too much, but I think you might be able to get away with this one as a topper in one coat if you did a really thin coat. The only issue with that is it would almost have to be over a pretty similar color, over another blue or like a really dark color because it isn't completely even and with one coat over another it might be a little bit of a struggle. But I think it's doable. Good formula on this one as well. So this one is building up pretty well on that second coat. I don't remember doing a third coat for this for my swatch pictures but I'm looking at it right now. And I think I am actually going to do a third here. It's just a little bit too sheer for me at the ends of my nails. So I will add a third coat. It does build up really well between one and two. It's just not quite as opaque as the other shimmer, even though I think I do like this color better than the other one. And like the other one, this isn't going to be gritty like a chunky glitter at all. So this one does cover completely in three coats. I had, like always, some nails that had thicker coats and some nails that had thinner coats. And it was really mainly these first two nails here that had a little bit thinner coats that needed the third. I wouldn't say that I needed it on these two nails for coverage, but it does seem to make the color a little bit... maybe. Maybe not. I think it makes the color just a little bit deeper, but that might be like a weird angle lighting situation too. Okay, I had like 10, not even 10 seconds of filming left to do my battery died, but that is three coats of Devon. So to be 100% here, I don't love this collection. <laughs> And it doesn't have anything to do with the polishes individually, it's just like how similar all the polishes are. Like I just feel like there didn't need to be 12 if they're all going to look so similar. And that's how I feel about the OPI collection, fall collection this year as well. That being said, my two favorites are the ones that are the standouts, the ones that are a little bit different. So Devon has that really nice shifty gold navy blue sparkly thing going on. And then Gardner as well, also blue. Um, but again, just kind of breaks rank with the rest of the collection as far as shimmer and color and everything else goes. So those two are my favorites. So that is the Zoya Element Collection for Fall 2018. Again, those are available right now, so I will link the website down below. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I will talk to you later. Bye.